Good day, friends. I'm Kerry Dillinger. This is Bible Class Topics. You've joined us for Lesson 4 of 4. We're studying Joseph and how he went about facing life's problems. Today we'll be studying in Genesis 41 all the way up through Genesis 50. Get your Bibles out and study with us today. Eight times Joseph faced life's problems. We've already studied the times that he's faced envy and hatred and betrayal. That was in our first lesson. In our second lesson, we talked about persistent temptation from Potiphar's wife and her false accusations against Joseph. In our third lesson, we talked about the ingratitude of Pharaoh's chief baker and then the power and responsibility that caused Joseph even more problems as he took over basically running the government of Egypt. Today we want to talk about the last two times that Joseph faced life's problems and we want to look at painful memories and past forgiven trespasses. Let's get right into it. Facing painful memories. Well, Joseph's problem. Joseph had forgotten and put behind him the pain and hurt that had been in his life up until the time that he took over the government of Egypt. And to Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction, Genesis 41, 50 and 52. It's been 20 years, and here come his brothers, and they're standing before him. They came to buy grain in Egypt because of the famine throughout the world. Joseph recognized them right away, but they did not recognize Joseph. How would Joseph even deal with a past that he had tried to forget? Joseph's response is that he was cautious. He did not immediately reveal himself to his brothers. Joseph did not know the condition of their hearts. He did not know his father's intent nor his younger brother Benjamin's condition. Joseph tried and tested his brothers. He accused them of being spies. He told them that all but one would be jailed until the younger brother was brought back to Egypt. After he had placed them in jail for three days, he brought them out and only insisted that one brother remain behind as a guarantee that they would return with Benjamin. They revealed the anguish and regret of what they had done to Joseph and Reuben announced his plea for his younger brother. Genesis 42, verses 21 and 23. Then they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother, for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us, and we did not hear. Therefore this distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not speak to you, saying, Do not sin against the boy? And you would not listen. Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. But they did not know that Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them through an interpreter. When Joseph heard this, his heart began to feel the pain of the past. Genesis 42:24. And he turned himself away from them and wept. Then he returned to them again, talked with them, and he told, took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. But he was still unsure about Benjamin. When the brothers finally returned with Benjamin, Joseph had them set down to eat with him. Now his heart yearned for his brother, so Joseph made haste and sought somewhere to weep, and he went into his chamber and wept there. Genesis 43:30. Apparently, Joseph intended to keep his younger brother Benjamin with him, so he had his silver cup placed in Benjamin's sack of grain, and when the brothers had left, he sent out his men after them to uncover the cup in Benjamin's sack. They were brought back, and Joseph announced his intention to keep Benjamin as a slave. Here, the true intentions of the brothers toward their past evil towards Joseph and their father became evident. 
Judah eloquently pleads for Benjamin. He even tells Joseph to take him, him instead of taking Benjamin. Well, Joseph can finally bear no more. Listen to this long reading from Genesis 45, verses 1 through 5. We'll skip down to 12 through 15. Then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and he wept aloud. And the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. And behold, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is in my mouth that speaks to you. So you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and all of you have seen, and you shall hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck, and he wept, and Benjamin wept on his neck. Moreover, he kissed all of his brothers and wept over them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. What's our application for this lesson? How can we face the painful memories of the past when we're confronted with them? Paul told the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, Test all things, hold fast what is good. And he wrote to the Philippians in chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, Brethren, I do not count myself to, a, to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And so we need to be like Joseph. We need to be, as Paul tells us, pressing on toward the goal, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. And so we come to our eighth problem that Joseph had to face in his life, facing past forgiven trespasses. What's Joseph's problem? Well, after Joseph's father died, his brothers were worried that Joseph had not really forgiven them. He had only forgiven them for his father's sake. Let's read from Genesis 50, verses 15 through 18. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph, saying, Before your father died, he commanded, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we are your servants. How did Joseph respond? Joseph could have revived the old hurts. He could have revived the old trespasses. His father was dead. He could have taken vengeance on his brothers at this point in time. Joseph, however, let them know that he had forgiven and forgotten their trespasses against him. Genesis 50, 19 through 21. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. For I am in the place of God. Let me read that again because I put the emphasis in the wrong part of the sentence. Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Genesis 50, 19 through 21. What's our application? How do we face those who have trespassed against us? How do we face those that we have forgiven? I've heard some people say, well, 
I might have forgiven them, but I will never forget what they did. Wow. It's hard to forget. Some cannot face such matters of presumed or actual wrongs others have committed against them. And they continue to nurse hurts and grudges for years and years, maybe for their whole entire life. But we, as followers of God, followers of Jesus Christ, must face trespasses by forgiving them and doing our very, very best to forget them. Jesus said this in Luke 17, 3 and 4, Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. In the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 6, 14 and 15, Jesus said, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Paul wrote this to the Colossians in chapter 3, verse 13, Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. Remember, Joseph had many reasons to be filled with hate and discouragement in his life. But in every crisis, he used the opportunity to talk about God or to d demonstrate living for God. In all of his life, Joseph never stopped being a follower of God course, he had no control over how others were treating him, how his brothers treated him, how he was treated by Potiphar's wife, by Potiphar, by the chief baker. He had no control over that, but he did have control over how he reacted to each and every one of these people that brought him problems in his life. Joseph turned his problems into opportunities for the glory of God. The outline for this series of lessons is copyrighted by Wayne Greeson. He reserves all rights. It's published and available for download at www.padfield.com. The illustration that we've used throughout this series is by Owen Jones from The History of Joseph and His Brethren, published by Day and Son in 1869. This drawing is in the public domain. Thank you so much for your support of the channel. If you have not subscribed to the channel, I would certainly appreciate it if you would. If you would leave a, a thumbs up or even a thumbs down for this video, and if you'd leave a comment, all of these things are greatly appreciated and they will help the channel to grow. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very, very soon here at Bible Class Topics. Until then, May God bless.